Good morning, good evening, everyone. Today we have our former student, Sana Riaz, and uh, we wanted to take a different approach this time. She has been through residency and now she's starting or has started her cardiology fellowship. So we wanted to understand her journey, what it takes to be in cardiology, how to prepare for it, and then some tips for residency applicants and also, of course, for fellowship applicants. So welcome, uh, Sana. Glad to have you. Thank you very much, Pavan. It's always a pleasure talking to you and uh, talking to everyone on your on your team. Okay, so let's start uh, from the beginning. Just give us a brief uh, background about you, your journey, you know, India, UAE and all that. So, so that the audience know where you are coming from. Sure. Um, so I did my um, medical school in Ras al which is in UAE. It was a six-year course, and and it included internship as well. So I graduated in 2015 after completing my internship. Then after that, I focused my attention on my USMLE steps. Uh, I had taken the help of Kaplan for that. And I think for me, because I like something more structured, so that was extremely helpful for me. Um, and then I also spent a lot of time doing uh hands-on, getting hands-on experience in the U.S. Uh, for that, I had, uh, like, I know, like, I think one of the major difficulties I had uh, while during my journey for residency was getting externships or getting hands-on experience because, like, I had spoken to you and I'd spoken to a few of my other mentors, my friends who had focused on getting uh, U.S. clinical experience and more so on getting hands-on experience so because of which uh, there were there were not a lot of places that were catering to hands-on and plus uh, international medical graduates so but then I think with your help with the list that USMLE Sarthi provides for observerships for externships I think that was extremely instrumental and in, you know for me to get those uh, that kind of an experience and even later on I think one of the things that I did and which I found beneficial during my interview season for residency was doing observership and some hands-on experience during the interview season because a lot of programs wanted to know what I was doing in the interim. So I think there were a lot of things that collectively worked for me uh, for um, my residency application. Um, but the bigger things that I think which a lot of programs stressed on uh, while I was interviewing for my residency, which they kind of highlighted uh, about my application, uh, was the fact that I had, um, that I'm from India. Uh, with a Indian citizenship, uh, but then so I studied and worked and grew up and everything in Dubai, and then coming to the US. So they felt that that was a good angle because they felt I was I could get into any milieu, and uh, that reflected in my letters of recommendation as well. Uh, and a few other things that worked for me was my US clinical experience, um, and all of them being hands-on clinical experience. Also, the uh, doing a, sort of a rotation, be it you could do a research elective, you could do a hands-on experience during uh, the interview season. I think that worked. And I think what really uh, helped me in this entire process was definitely Kaplan and USMB SRT. I think uh, these two were my cornerstones and uh, my support systems. Um, I think if even had I written my application on my own, I probably wouldn't have highlighted myself uh, the way uh, USMB Sarthi helped me do so. Because I think as uh, international medical graduates coming from Indian background, coming from the subcontinent, coming from Dubai, we all don't tend to highlight our uh, or advertise our qualities. Uh, and I think it's very important that we do so in our applications and even during the interviews. Because it's not about shying away from what you have, but uh, it's um, very important that, you know, what you have, you tell that and show it on your application as well as during your interviews. Okay. So just to summarize, uh, just get into the residency, your uh, main kind of focus was on U.S. clinical experience, working during the interview season, uh, you know, to make sure the, uh, the programs knew uh, that you were clinically active. And, mm -hmm. and then, of course, uh, the cultural kind of assimilation skill that you, you brought in, you know, India, UAE, US. So that, uh, that was good. So now quickly, let's shift gear to your residency. How was the residency experience? And when did you decide on cardiology? So my residency experience, I did my residency at Upstate Medical University uh, in Syracuse, New York. And I think I had a fantastic three-year experience. Um, some great mentors, great 
uh, pathology. I mean, I think uh, it being uh, almost a 700, 800 bedded hospital. And plus, uh, while doing, doing your residency at Upstate, you also rotate through uh, Krauss Hospital, which is like a sister hospital, and then the VA hospital. So it's uh, we get to cater different patient populations. Krauss Hospital is a private setting. And then we is, you know, we're catering to the veterans and it's a different uh, like uh, medical record system and everything is kind of different uh, at the VA. So I think experience wise, uh, I, I felt very like uh, clinically strong because that was uh, what I wanted to focus on. I like I know different people focus on different things. Some are research oriented, some are clinically oriented. I have always been more clinically oriented. And um, I think Upstate really helped me enhance that um, aspect. And uh, at the end of three years, I, I felt I could work as an internist if I wanted to. Uh, so I uh, enjoyed my three year experience a lot. Excellent, good. So now switching to cardiology, when did you decide to do cardiology? And how did you prepare for it? This is one of the most important questions that we get all the time. You know, was it during your residency application itself that you had started some research or was it after getting into residency and how did you prepare? So during, um, uh, like while preparing for my residency, I uh, I had a few interests. Like I, I was interested in cardiology, I'd like to mention, but um, I think it kind of uh, got consolidated when I started residency. So I don't remember mentioning it during my, um, uh, like in my residency application about it. But uh, once I started doing rotations in my CCU um, uh, and like doing cardiology consults and uh, interacting with the fellows, interacting with uh, attending some of them, uh, eventually became uh, my mentors and my support system as well. So I think it was the entire experience uh, that uh, kind of molded me towards cardiology. And then um, I think one thing that helped me in deciding that I wanted to do cardiology was doing more rotations in it, um, because I think it kind of like exposes you to it and also like doing a little bit of research because um, uh, like cardiology like once you get into a fellowship there are there's a lot of things that you do as a fellow like I've, that I've come to realize now and which is like it just increases my excitement and uh, my uh, interest in the in the area but then uh, doing rotations in it I think is a good way of kind of deciding on whether you know that's something that you want to head into and plus also during these rotations it helps you to build a camaraderie with the attendings they get to see your work because you eventually need letters of recommendation as well so uh, and having a cardiology letters like because as residency you need uh, like four letters for fellowship as well and uh, one has is a man like is from the program director which uh, uh, like in every this is for everyone like one letter has to be from the program director and the other three letters could be either from a medicine attending or it could be a, from a cardiology attending. Like frankly, like as long as your letters are great, it does not matter whether it's coming from medicine or cardiology, but like I've uh, like uh, gone through during my um, application process and my uh, interviews for fellowship, I have seen that like if you have cardiology letters, it's always a plus because you it shows that you've worked in that field and then the attendings who are cardiology attendings have seen your work so it speaks of your interest as well as your work in cardiology so what so that means the clinical experience obviously and rotations uh matter did you do any away electives in cardiology outside of upstate did you go anywhere uh, no, I did not. I mean, okay. uh, we, I could have, but it's just that around that time, COVID had also hit. So that kind of blocked away any opportunity to do away electives. Now, what about research? You know, how did you find research projects and how did you build your research portfolio for cardiology? Um, for my research itself, I think my um, research was more heavy with regards to case reports mm -hmm. more than research projects itself. Uh, and case reports, it, was, it wasn't difficult to get them because um, like I mentioned, we have a wide variety of pathology that we see in Upstate. So like, getting those cases was not difficult at all. And like I said, um, I had you know the support of mentors and fellows. So getting in touch with them and always like checking with fellows about you know if there's any projects, any case reports, and things like that helps uh, them to see your interest as well as for you to get on to those projects. So that'll be one way to uh, build it up. 
and also like you know we uh, like uh, our program director was very pro research as well for uh, residency so we would always get to know like you know if we are having any sort of um, uh, conferences or things like that and we were always encouraged to be a part of it so it need not be just uh, like research projects and ca case presentations uh, sorry uh, uh, case reports but then also being a part of these conferences does help okay so um, you know if you were to summarize to someone who may be a resident now looking for cardiology kind of fellowship what would be your roadmap for them you know first year second year what should they be focused on just to as they prep for fellowship right i think it's uh, uh, you don't have to know that you want to be a cardiologist as soon as you enter residency but uh, like deciding within the first 6 months to 1 year um, is a good idea because mm -hmm. you ideally you have to not ideally you have to apply for uh, fellowship at the end of your second year mm -hmm. so like you have two years to uh, like build your application and everything uh, with regards to like you know for example cardiology in my case so uh, firstly um, like doing rotations and knowing that it is cardiology that you want to do and once you decide that it is cardiology you know, mention it to everyone, like be it your program director, your men, your, uh, I had a mentor as a, a medicine mentor, like my uh, assist, associate director was my uh, mentor. So like I had mentioned it to him and then like just talking it out helps because then everybody knows of your interests and then they could direct you accordingly because many, it was my PD or my associate program director who actually would be like, okay, you know, this is just project that's going on you should probably be a part of it so uh, just letting everyone know about it helps and then uh, as soon as you get to know uh, or even like even if you're in that deciding phase being a part of any project is not going to do any harm like because even if you uh, like apply for uh, you get onto a cardiology project and eventually apply for say rheumatology it's, it's fine. It's okay. Because it basically, everybody wants to know if you are inclined towards research or not. And people change um, fields all the time. And it's as a resident, you're free to do so. So uh, get onto a project, even if you're in the deciding phase, doing case reports is helpful. Uh, like I was, when I was in this process of uh, like uh, building my application, what I used to generally hear is having uh, five or six case reports um, as you know yourself being the first author is helpful like it kind of um, looks good on your CV and having one research project or having even quality improvement projects that's a lot like a lot of places ask about you know quality improvement projects and how did you change the practice in your hospital and things like that so that's something that I would encourage people to get on to but quality improvement projects take time so the earlier you get onto it the better because you know, you need to get the results and then, you know, implement it onto your hospital, uh, the working level, and then, you know, you've got to show those results as well. So yes, research takes time, but case reports is fairly uh, more, uh, it, it's a little more easier, a little more faster. Okay. So that would be the like timeline. Like, so at the end of first year, if you can decide that, you know, what you want to get into uh, in the meantime, start doing case reports, it could be in any field. And then once you decide, maybe get a, <clears throat> get onto a project. And even if it's uh, the research project is in progress by the time uh, you are applying and your second by the end of your second year, it's okay. At least it shows that you're actively being a part of a project. And I think what really another thing that was very important at least this year was uh, uh, scores. For mm -hmm. some odd reason, even in fellowship, USMB scores were uh, were quite a criteria. So great scores come along a long way. So that would be another thing. And again, letters of recommendation and word of mouth. So uh, more than I think like, yes, the scores will get you the interviews, but uh, for you to actually secure a place there, um, your letters of recommendation are mentioning that you've been a great resident and you know, word of mouth from your seniors, from attendings goes a long way. Okay. Excellent. So this I think was, was very helpful for anyone trying to get into cardiology or any fellowship, at least the roadmap and the structure you laid out is, is excellent. Now, as we wrap up, uh, thinking back three, four years when you were applicant for residency, because now is the time for residency applications also, and a lot of our audience, they want to hear what should they do in say the next three months? What would be your top tips 
for someone applying for residency and maybe with three months to go, uh, what should they be focused on? I think the one very important thing, at least even with respect to fellowship, this is, I know this is something that you emphasize on power. But even like with respect to fellowship or residency, it doesn't matter. I think submitting your application on time is extremely crucial. Okay. So if it's September 15th, I think you should definitely like submit it. Um, like it should be available to the program when they open it on the 15th. So uh, that I would say is important. Second thing would be um, uh, continuing to show that you're working in some sort of a like, you know, clinical experience or research. I think that would be uh, that would be beneficial, especially during the interview season. And um, again, the application itself, like I think, like I mentioned, has to be like your personal statement, your uh, your application should be a good package. Like you should wrap it up well. Like you've probably already by this time worked on it already. So you have all the elements, but it's important that, you know, it all falls into the right place. And I think you do a great job at that. So if they're already following you, I don't think they'll have any trouble with that. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Sana. This was very, very helpful. Appreciate your time. Uh, I'm no sure problem. this will be very useful to the students. Thank you.